come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Hey, do us a favor, wherever you found us, go on over and hit that like or subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you, you who are interested in the same kind of B-movie schlock that we are. We love you. We hope that you'll, uh, you know, do all this. It'll help us uh, uh, get, uh, you know, rise up through those algorithms. And in our quest for total world domination, I would have the great honor right now of introducing you to the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And this week we're watching a movie that was chosen by you. 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 <laughs> That's right. We're on our second of four uh, January listener choice month. That's right. For uh, those of you who this is your first rodeo, we did a uh, we put up a, a, a solicitation for suggestions. Uh, we had a poll. People voted, and now we are watching the top four vote getting movies. Uh, from that experiment, uh, the first one was last week. Watch Big Trouble in Little China. This week, we were watching The Hidden from the year eighty-seven, and go. directed by <laughs> Mister <Caleb> Jack <laughs> Fucking Shoulder. <laughs> Jack Shoulder. <laughs> Who? Now, why would we know that name? Nightmare on Elm Street two. What was the other movie we watched? Alone in the Dark. That that one. Yeah, Bad right. one. The, yeah, not not the Christian Slater one. The one with uh, Martin Landau and Jack Palance. Oh, right. And Donald Pleasance. Oh, yeah, we yeah. brought that. I forgot yes. about that movie. Yes, that was... You brought that? I did. <laughs> the movie oh, that should have been amazing, but it wasn't. It should have been great. Right? It sucked. Yeah. It should have been great. Yeah, because I was... Uh, I had recently just seen another Jack Shoulder movie, and that was uh, Wishmaster 2. Um, uh, Wishmaster 2 was not actually made for theaters, it was for video. I went and looked at his filmography, and I think after The Hidden, he only did one other like real theatrical movie, and that was Renegades. Anybody remember Renegades with mustachioed Kiefer Sutherland and Lou Diamond Phillips? Oh, yeah, <laughs> this does oh, sound no. familiar. <laughs> yes, this sounds familiar. Yeah. Uh, and then he's done like a ton of directed video stuff after that, and yeah, of course he directed he directed one episode of the Tremors TV series. Yeah, so he's right up your alley, Sean. <laughs> right? <laughs> is that the one with Kevin Bacon, the one that never got uh, shown? No, no, this is the 2003. No, oh, okay. Tremors. Yeah, no, the trash Tremors. Yeah, the, the, this is right after Tremors three is when this one started. So, well, there you go. He's mm-hmm. uh, probably most famous, as you said, for a Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, the movie that was reviled like throughout history as the worst of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, and now has like a camp status and is coming back around for reappraisal. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually like that movie. I'll stand up for that movie. You like Halloween too, Rob Zombie's Halloween too. I do. Mm, that's true. Okay, I kind of like that one a little bit too. But okay, oh, I, so, you know what, Colin? Colin, now that you said that, bloody disgusting is going to write an article tomorrow, being like, you know, you're wrong about Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Yep, yep. Just wait. They're this Halloween, say, they're listening to this show. They're going to do it for. No, they're going to say you're wrong about Renegades, and they're going to run a full article about that. <laughs> um, Watch it. So this movie, uh, 1987, The Hidden, um, stars. Same year. Who's, who's in the? Oh, it's away. Same well, year. I was going to say the same, same year as uh, uh, a couple other, uh, or at least one other buddy cop movie, Lethal Weapon. Uh, I only mention that because it's uh, they share a similar um, DNA, let's say. Yeah, what's that? Well, I mean, they're both uh, buddy cop movies. They both take place in L.A. Uh, they're both about, uh, you know, breaking in that new partner. And uh, this one's a little different. I and we'll get to that. Ed Ross is in both of them. Yeah. You know, uh, as far as I know, uh, Riggs and Murtaugh were not aliens, though. So, oh, Big spoiler, difference. spoiler word. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, did you so you didn't look up the other little factoid that those movies might have shared together? 
I mean, I didn't uh, know anything about this. <laughs> oh, well, apparently uh, Michael Nury, who is the star of this, one of the stars of this film, was offered, uh, turned down the role of Riggs in Lethal Weapon in order to do this movie. That seems shocking to me, Bad but choice. I mean, you know, well, I, uh, because I'm we'll, glad, well, I'm glad what happened happened because we got Lethal Weapon and then we got this movie. Yeah. But I, and I'm trying to, you know, cause you go like, well, no, Mel Gibson's a much bigger star than Michael Nury, but I think lethal weapon was really the movie that made Mel Gibson a big star because prior to that, he was doing movies like the bounty or river and you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it, he obviously had been Mad Max. Uh, Michael Nury at this point in time was probably best known for, uh, the dancing movie. Uh, fuck. Um, flash dance, flash dance. There That's it is. Right. <laughs> He's the guy in flash dance. I was going to say he's Dr. Roberts from the OC. <laughs> that was later, but yes. That's, uh, that's very true. <laughs> he's still working. He was in, he's in Yellowstone, uh, the current show Yellowstone with Kevin Costner. And I remember uh, him, like, a, as a kid, there was um, this show called Cliffhangers. And every week they had, like, these revolving, like, 20 minute uh, shows. And one of them was The Curse of Dracula. And he was Dracula in uh, the Curse of Dracula. <laughs> like that's good. That's the, good casting. <laughs> he looks like a Dracula. Well, he looks, he looks like, like a Dracula. The Frank Langella Dracula, or whatever. Right. right. He would have great hair as a Dracula. Yeah. Um, who was it? He Somebody still has great hair. It, still to this day. He still has a nice hair. Yeah. Assuming that's not like, a wig. No, it's not going. Anywhere. No, that's like his it's hair. it's gray. It's very gray now, but it's very thick and curly. And trust yeah. trust Holly. She's had to look at him a lot the past week. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ironically enough, late to the OC party, but I made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else is in this movie? Chris Sarandon. No, no. You're saying Michael Nury looks like Chris Sarandon. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. wow well at one point when he I had he... Kyle McLaughlin and Chris I'm sorry I'm sorry but he there... does look like Chris Sarandon yeah Is toward the end like, of the movie about this in the chat. when he Very had much. the tie the red tie like open I'm like holy he looks like the fucking like from Fright Night I mean that's the yeah. look yeah he looks just like him I meant to say Kyle McLaughlin sorry <laughs> <laughs> are you are you Holly are you with us Holly Yes. Is this you? Yeah. <laughs> Are yes, you an alien? It is me. Kyle McLaughlin, another person with the still great head of hair. Yes. Right? Sons of bitches. He has great hair. That's very true. Has he done anything uh, since uh, Twin Peaks The Return? He was He's been in like what, for a bit. What year was The Return? Oh, uh, God. It feels like it was like two years, like 2018, maybe? 2017 was, was The Return. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, he's always going to be Dr. Trey McDougal from Sex and the City because I'm determined to talk about Sex and the City on every movie we do this month. <laughs> Wasn't he also, um, was he on Desperate Housewives? I think so. Okay. And uh, yes, yes, he was. I mean, obviously, he had a film career. He was discovered by uh, David Lynch, I believe. He was the cast of the lead as the lead in Dune. And then uh, had his breakout really was um, in Blue Velvet. And then I believe this was his next movie, The Hidden, uh, prior to becoming, um, you know, Dale Cooper in Twin Peaks. And there's a lot of similarities here in, I mean, because that's why I'm like, I mean, yeah. I know that he worked with David Lynch, but, you know, you know, did David Lynch watch The Hidden and go like, that's Dale Cooper? He, he had to have, <laughs> right? Had to well, have. But he, he did blue velvet before this yeah and dune which david, was also yeah. david lynch and he's also an agent going to a town to solve a mystery this is what he does <laughs> yeah true yeah he's got a but that whole um there is like a it's like a detached otherworldliness to kyle mclaughlin uh and his performances at least in the david lynch stuff and in this i think that makes him like perfect casting for this uh, movie where he's um, I don't know uh, well, we said it was a spoiler and we hope that you've seen this but basically the movie is well we'll get into it but uh, <laughs> he's like in, he's got this like aloof but somehow sympathetic persona right yes yeah um, he was he's also it uh, always seems very very uh, sullen very solemn in this movie did Kyle McLaughlin's theatrical career come to a crashing halt with showgirls is that the one that like hit the brick wall and like, okay, you're done. Now you're, you're going back to TV. That was after yeah, Twin Peaks anyway, right? Yeah. The cult classic showgirls. Um, 
Okay, so well, what's this movie about? Set us up. How do we get into the? Because this movie, um, having just watched it, I think has one of the best, uh, like opening ten minutes, maybe of any movie that we have watched on the Saturday Night Freak Show for a while. <laughs> it reminded me of Baby Driver, especially the way it starts with like the the heist has already happened, and so you're watching the chase after the heist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I do like the way they uh, intro this movie because we come in and start in the credits, and it starts with um, very like grainy black and white uh, CCTV footage of of the bank lobby. As you see people walking in and out, and cops moving around, and then you see one guy come into frame, just kind of standing there, staking the place out, and then he starts blowing people away. And this starts us off on, like Colin said, like ten of the greatest minutes of eighties. Of 80s cinema, I'm going to say it. 10 of the greatest minutes of 80s cinema (laughs) I had seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. I was wowed by this opening. Like, that's how, Mm -hmm. like you said, Colin, that's how you start a movie. You jump right in and you just go for it. Yeah, you just hit people in wheelchairs. Yeah. Right? Just Just kill them. Well, because it turns into like a chase. I mean, it's like immediately following the shootout. Then it becomes like this chase scene with 80s rock because the guy's like playing on his bitching tape deck in his <laughs> hot Ferrari as he's driving down the street trying to get away from uh, from the cops. Very um, calmly, though, he is. He's just rocking out in his car trying to get away. Yeah, he's definitely you get the impression that this guy's enjoying it. It's Chris Mulkey, right? Mulkey? Yeah. Mulkey, right? Everybody Mulkey. knows him as an actor now, but um, the uh, there's also, we get to introduce like our protagonist in the middle of this right and kind of the dynamic they're looking for this guy the police this is uh, uh michael nuri and ed ross uh yeah it was ed ross right for some reason i think it's uh, ed o'neill that's not that's ed the guy, ross. another guy ed o ross, ed o. ross yeah. thank you yeah um he so the, those two are partners and they're tracking this guy and have been from before the movie starts they're like this guy went on a rampage for two weeks where he like killed i don't know like 25 people and he stabbed like six of them and he you know, <laughs> he robbed like 16 banks and a grocery store and a candy store mm. um <laughs> it's like wow this guy has had a run truly yeah, and then he's plowing over people in wheelchairs. That's the thing where you're like, oh, wow, this guy is like a heartless son of a bitch. He's just running people in wheelchairs over uh, en route to a massive shootout in Los Angeles Street where all these cops just like unload on the guy because that's what you do. And I like that, Michael Newer, you pointed out, Sean, what does he do? <laughs> he He's getting ready. He's like, give me that shotgun as he stands behind the police barricade waiting for this car. And he gives a light little blow on his fingers just because he's getting ready. Getting ready with a shotgun. Just got to dry him off. Got to make sure everything's cool. Does that help? I mean, come on. It's like a pool, pool cue thing, right? You got to dry your hands I guess before so. you get on the, because you, you don't want to fuck true. up, right? You don't want any sweat you on You don't want it to slip out of your hands. Got to, like your hands got to be like true. Like a little air vent when you're bowling. Uh, it's yeah. very true. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Just like bowling. Well, Just the way like bad bowling. guys in bowling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They blast this motherfucker with uh, all the ammunition that they have. And uh, that crashes his sweet, sweet fucking uh, Ferrari. And the guy gets out after that. So they unload on him again and they blow up his car and there's this huge fireball. And you're like, this is the greatest thing. (laughs) (laughs) It really is. Cause you're like, all right, threat neutralized. This guy's fine. They're like, they're like fire. (laughs) (laughs) And again, huge fireball. He gets blown out of the way. It is. uh, It's truly amazing way to start the movie. There's something mm-hmm. about punctuating your like a sequence with a, a with an explosion. I mean, I know that it's a, a cliche, but like it works. There's something to that when you big fireball, like, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, but then we get into kind of the story of the movie proper. So, um. So where do you go from there? The bad guy is. Uh, well, I guess he's not dead, right? Mm. He's horribly burned, and he's taken to yeah. the intensive care ward. Yes. And um, there we meet, uh, I believe this is where Kyle McLaughlin shows up, right? So who is he? Well, I think we end up going back to, um, we end up going back to the police station, obviously. I, and I want to say like, this is, this feels to me like one of the best police stations represented in, you know, in cop movies, period. I would say it, I just, the. Uh, it's pretty it, great. The dynamic is solid. I, I like the, the I like the banter we get right off the bat, and the guy's like, "I haven't seen my wife in a month," and the other guy's like, "Oh, I saw her last night. She's fine." Like, I love <laughs> yeah. that whole exchange. Yeah, these great. guys, 
<laughs> talk and quip and say little things. It really feels like, you know, these guys went to work together as cops for 10 years and they just, you know, chip at each other and all that stuff. And it's really, <laughs> it's like fun. It feels like they're yeah. real people and real cops. Like they I did like that it. very well. And uh, so they're going through all that. And then Kyle McLaughlin just have, you know, walks like it walks in like he does uh, and says that he is Tom Beck's new partner. Tom Beck being Michael Murray. Yeah, well, he's uh, he's from the FBI, right? I mean, that's basically yes. the because this is the thing, I guess, with all these buddy cop movies and all that being an FBI guy, a police officer or a doctor. Right. That's why these are positions where you have access to like do everything. Right. <laughs> I think that's why they become like, you know, uh, protagonists in all these movies, because you can just go flash a badge and boom, you get right. to go to all these different places, meet all these different people for your story. Access. Um, so he's from the FBI. He's been sent from Washington to apprehend this guy, uh, this bank robber. Um, but now knowing that the guy's in the hospital, uh, McLaughlin's going over there to see him. But before he gets there, the movie drops its first, uh, like surprise, uh, you know, to the person who's going into this movie, not knowing what the hell's going on. This is the big moment, right? Uh, That would be, that would be us, sir. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> we had uh, yeah this is this would be the big moment all right because uh, yeah. not knowing anything about this um the yeah. guy that they in, just in oh, go ahead, chat, it was just a series of what the fuck like, well there huh? was a very normal conversation happening that got quickly interrupted <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure in like mid-sentence we all changed over we're like hey what is he doing what <laughs> Because at this moment, the guy who was just blown away uh, five minutes ago, um, uh, there's a, a patient next to him in the bed. And there's a little, anybody else think about uh, uh, Jason Goes to Hell at this point <laughs> during the movie? Anybody, that pop in anybody's head? Yeah, especially because this is me. also a new line cinema movie. It's like, man, they really <laughs> love the hidden over there. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> like, what's in the archives? Let's do the hidden again. Um, and we get a, uh, I'm going to call it a transition scene, uh, because, uh, at this point he, he is, uh, his mouth opens up and he proceeds to transfer the giant, the biggest, ugliest looking slug I've ever seen in my life into another man's mouth. And, I don't know if that sounds gross to you, but holy shit, uh, Kevin Yeager, who did the effects in this movie, really created something fucking nasty yeah, right here at this point in this movie right not yeah, as much as move uh, too mm-hmm. it's ah, mm-hmm. can you describe it because it's it's oh yeah it's like little legs came out of it's mouth like first. spider legs first of all come oh, out grab the outside like, of the guy's mouth no it's like nope. a it's like a spider squid yeah, but well, yeah. the spider legs like grab on, and then like the proboscis or whatever comes out, which looks like a snail. <laughs> don't, I don't something. want you ever to say proboscis right? again. That sounded bad. <laughs> but it's slimy. It's kind of translucent. It's like the snail head, and then more of the thing keeps coming out, and you're like, "What the fuck? It's huge!" I mean, yeah. It's huge. It's got a yeah. It's got a big ass. Very squid like. Yeah, well, in Squiddy, because by the time the whole thing has come out, like these tentacled pieces of it are like coming out behind it and you're like this is like just fucking gross <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we get it's, a lot of and we get a lot of like the pulsating from under the skin before it emerges Ugh. yeah there's a lot yeah it's it's a hell of a makeup job it was actually a uh, stop motion from was Kevin it? To, yeah to pull this off it was stop motion because i think they were doing some uh well, I'm st- doing some reverse stuff, and I mean, this is what they had to do to, to like to pull it off in such a way where, because I think it looks great, but to to get the movements of the alien coming out and going into the mouth, they had to do stop motion. Uh, apparently, um, I think Mulkey saw like footage of the uh, of this scene once they had finally pulled it together, and he saw like two seconds of it, and he couldn't watch it anymore. He's like, "No, nope, I can't watch this. <laughs> Happened to me. I have to leave the room." So. It affected the actors, if not the audience. We've had way too much like slimy mouth trauma in the movies we've watched lately. Like Fire in the Sky was also gross in this way. And mm-hmm. we need a break from that. Yeah, we're, we got icky. Yeah, 
<laughs> it's an impressive effect, uh, you know, between two like sculpted practical heads that looked, you know, because at one point I was like, is that the actual guy? Are they actually like, right. you know, he's got, he's putting this like puppet thing into the guy's mouth. But then the next scene is like the tentacles going, you know, being sucked into it. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a fake head. That was uh, a <laughs> that, that was a good sound effect. Huh? Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what we've got going on here is we've got the classic body swap movie. Um, that's why I'm like, you know, in my mind, when I try to think like a body swap, I mean, the, the, the thing that comes to mind after this is like fallen, right? Uh, yeah. The Denzel Washington movie. But you know, then you're dealing more with like spirit stuff, right? That's more spiritual slash demon stuff. Yeah. yeah. Possession and all that. And, uh, you know, yep. but, um, I was actually trying to look it up. I'm like, where did the hell did this concept come from? And yeah, I could track it back to like HP Lovecraft did one, but they were always usually more like spirit transitions, not like the body jumping alien. I don't yeah. know when that actually came out around, but it had to be like a twilight zone or an outer uh, limits or something like that. Um, but basically, so that's always going to be what what you've got going on here. It's the idea that like this thing is coming to Earth, and uh, it's kind of like on a joyride, right? It's like taking the human being for uh, just a thrill ride because it's a criminal from another planet, apparently, right? Mm. That loves yes. heavy metal music, loves fast cars, just robs you know jewelry stores, and banks, and all this other. <laughs> Right. Whatever he wants, he takes it. Yeah. He's like just uh yeah, fuck it. I'm just doing this for he's like a passenger. It's funny I kept I kept waiting for the like heavy metal music part to have another payoff at some point. And then I realized like, no, this is an eighties movie. That's just what it is. Like it just mm. likes heavy metal. If it was a nineties movie, there'd be a reason for that. But since it was eighties, like, no, 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 he just likes it. Like that's yeah. it. That's how I felt about the Ferraris. I was like, okay, there's mm-hmm. gonna be a reason for why he's specifically constantly stealing Ferraris. Yeah. And no. No, no. This is an 80s no. Movie. <laughs> he's just a douchebag from the 80s. Just <laughs> yeah. douchebag. Some douchebag alien came down. Right. It's good to know that there's douchebags other other places in the universe. <laughs> yep. When you're a human, I mean you may as well live it up, right? Yeah, <laughs> get the best. Right. Car. He knows he can't, he knows he's not gonna die. Like he can you keep using bodies and shit. I mean, so yeah, why not? Go for joyride, run over dudes in wheelchairs. But how does this alien know Ferraris are like good cars? How does it know about our culture? Because it's fast. I, I, don't I know. think he's really he's really just like he's just really observant. <laughs> I th- no, I think no, I think he I don't think he is at all. I think, but I think the first car he came across when he became a human was a Ferrari and he or yeah. he learned which ones were fast. And which ones I he mean, liked. And- yeah, because I mean, I, I get the impression that he's just like, he just sees things and wants them. So at some point, he just saw a Ferrari and he's like, that's what I want. Mm. I guess I, I guess I just thought it was weird that because if it was just fast cars, there are fast cars that are not Ferraris, but it, it is a Ferrari, what, three or four times in this movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think maybe a yeah. couple of por- does uh, McLaughlin drive a Porsche? Yes, yeah. he does. Um, a lot of cool cars in this movie uh, for that era. I mean, even just in the background, you know, driving through the Los Angeles, I'm like, oh, look at that thing, you know. Yep. Um, so it's uh, I always kind of wonder about you know the body swap movie always has to do with um, you know, because you have to go looking for like the next host, right? You know, something's mm-hmm. gonna happen to your current host. Uh, this thing apparently is uh, for the most part impervious to, um bullet fire because i mean they unload on this guy like a bunch of times he keeps going which i always wonder like where is the alien in right the body (laughs) that's a good that's a good question like is he does he know is he just avoiding it like i'm curious maybe he's super in tune to the body and he can feel when like bullets are coming in and he moves out of the way well there's a scene uh later on where um or he's just in the foot i don't know <laughs> he may he may just be hiding out in the foot but did you see the size of that thing i mean <laughs> right <laughs> like where the S- fuck does S- it go suddenly, suddenly a very skinny woman has cankles and they're like what's are you okay like what's wrong oh, it's an alien in my leg it's fine yeah it's not like the puppet masters right where it was a little thing that got into your brain it was like puppeteering you around and all that stuff but this is a big ass alien yeah. residing somewhere in your body 
uh, that's impervious to bullet hits. But I wonder if the ph- physiology, um, because this is there's a scene later that happens where um, so he gets into the body of this older guy who's gone into the hospital for cardiac arrest. And you're like, well, I know that that's going to come up later. Right. There's a certain right. physical limitation, even though he's able to bring the body back to life and motor it around. Um, eventually, that heart problem is going to catch up with him. It really doesn't in the way that I thought it was going to, but there's a couple times where he's like trucking down the street when somebody steals his Ferrari, right? And he's like running after him. like, Oh my heart. Um, but he has like a heart attack at one point in the movie and it causes like all of his veins to kind of pulsate. And then out of his arm, uh, you know, it actually bursts and uh, like a tentacle comes out. Mm-hmm. of his arm and so then i'm like is the alien like we saw it as this big slug but once it gets in there is it actually running all through his body maybe, maybe. maybe. that's what it kind of looked like yeah it's kind of like um in the in the faculty you know when they put their hand up against the glass and the thing just takes its entire shape veins and all so probably something like that it spreads itself out throughout the body yeah mm-hmm. which would be why and, it- and that's why it can still keep being ambulatory, even though the, the body is losing a lot of blood. It's not dependent on the, you know, actually driving the meat puppet, right? right. It's actually I'm in sure there. It, uh, <laughs> right. I'm sure it helps that the body is, yeah, driving the meat puppet. Ooh, like that's, that's a good album right there. Driving the <laughs> meat puppet. Uh, that's copyright 2021. Copyright Saturday 2020. Saturday Night Freak Show. 2021. Jesus. I mean, we all know what that sounds like, right? <laughs> Driving the meat Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sounds like Holly, it sounds like a lot of things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever you want it to be. <laughs> mm, driving the meat <laughs> Well, McLaughlin's character is like, um, uh, he, you know, the FBI somehow knows more about this, uh, you know, because he's instantly able to tell like, you know, this guy died and now we got to go after this next guy. And Nuri's like, what in the hell? And why? I don't get it. So basically, but this movie doesn't, well, I guess there is the point where like, he has to actually explain what the fuck's going on to, uh, to his human partner. Oops. Sure. But he comes <laughs> in. Well, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but he comes in and he's a little, he's a little, feels a little weird right off the bat when we first, when he's first introduced in this movie. So it, we're kind of questioning like who this guy is. He comes in, he says he's from the FBI. I mean, that's what usually the FBI does in these movies. Like I'm from the FBI. I'm after this guy, but he seems to know, like Michael Nury says, he seems to know a lot more than he's letting on as far as this goes. And his like, uh, his behavior becomes slowly weirder and weirder throughout the movie. He doesn't know how, regular people things work he doesn't know how alka-seltzer works which that joke was i i liked it especially (laughs) when it comes back later with the aspirin like um so he's we're suspicious of him because he's not acting quite normal did you guys at what point did you guys figure it out like like he's gotta be i mean colin you knew because you've seen this movie before but i mean you you caught on i mean i i saw what they were doing but i was like okay this might be a fake out right and then and then you were like kyle mclaughlin's an alien right and i was like is he and then like i think it was like the scene the next scene he was at dinner at his partner's house i'm like okay i think he is right and then just like he's acting too weird i was kind of denying it for a while too because i thought it seemed too obvious i was like no they wouldn't do that like it's a misdirect but yeah that's what i thought and i was like "Mm, i don't think it's that kind of movie So now we're actually in, it's not even a body swap movie. It's the classic story of two alien or like an alien cop versus alien, uh, criminal it's an alien. <laughs> it's an alien bounty hunt is yeah. what it is. And it's like, <laughs> this is their, their next stop. Like that's pretty great. That's right. Double feature with I come like in this. peace, right? There you go. <laughs> or double feature this with fucking, uh, uh dead heat. Right, yeah, come on. Uh, this is a dead heat <laughs> double whole, feature. This whole movie, I was like, this is making me want to watch Dead Heat. Right? Yeah. Oh my god, best. <sighs> so, <laughs> so um, there's, okay, okay. There's, good time. Well, there's this scene that um, I thought it was it was a nice scene that you usually to me it feels like you don't see in these type of movies. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, Nuri invites his new partner. Well, I guess that's a that's a staple of the buddy cop movie. Oh, he invites him over for dinner to meet his family. Yeah, it's Lethal Weapon. It's uh, up to the states, even uh, True Detective. Like, you know, the partner's yeah. got to come over and the wife's like, good to meet you. Please come in and have dinner. You know, you got to introduce him to the That's family. That's so strange to me, the idea of like 
hey, I need to have my like coworker over and meet my family for dinner. Like that's so weird to me. I, I think if they're, um, I think the reasoning is like the wife always wants to meet the guy whose her husband's life is in his hands. So when it comes to cop partners, I think that's a, I, I imagine that's a big thing. Yeah, it's like my only experience is movies, but it seems like the partnership in that field is stronger than just a coworker. Yeah. Again, my only experience is movies, but sure, yeah. That's what I get. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. This could completely be a movie trope, for all we know. Yeah, I yeah, wonder. <laughs> right, one of those things that we all think that came from somewhere. Nope, just came from movies. But I mean, like, I don't know. My dad was a fireman, and all of his friends are firemen. Like that. That's his friend base. Like, but they also live have- together. Like firemen live together for a significant amount of time. Police well, officers don't. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like if you're a if you're a cop and you have a partner, there's a good chance you're together for 14 hours in a day, depending on how long your day is. So right. And similar. if you're behind if you're behind cars taking bullets with each other, I mean that'll yeah. bond you pretty quick. Yeah, and I, I think, think there I was see it being a stronger bond. I think there was a time, like even here, where you know they would pair cops up. I mean, you would have a partner. You'd have two cops in a squad car. And now I think you know budget cuts and whatever. It's like one cop in a squad car. But I imagine there's a bond that forms. You know, if you two people running around all day. Um, right. Uh, I just watched. Um, uh, speaking of bonds between new partners, I just watched Last Action Hero again, and the scene where they're partnering everybody up at the cop desk is running through my head. It's like <laughs> you'll, you're assigned with the animated cat, and then fucking Danny DeVito <laughs> animated cat comes up. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's bonds between these people, whether they're real or not. That movie is so long. Well, I think this was as I was watching the movie tonight. I'm like, this is the scene where they're e- extremely tipping their hand that uh, McLaughlin has an extraterrestrial origin because they show the uh, the alien convict does a thing where he looks at himself in the mirror and rubs his face. And there's a scene in the in, the, in, in Michael Nury's home where McLaughlin does the same thing. We learn some things about this character here, um, which are kind of like uh, uh, carried with through the rest of the movie. But um, we find out that, you know, his backstory, which was kind of interesting. And there's, you know, these um, he takes a shine to uh, Nuri's uh, daughter. You know, the fact that he has a daughter and then it's revealed that like he had a daughter, you know, because he says like he's hunting this guy. Uh, you know, what's his interest? He's hunting the guy who killed my partner. That's a, you know, movie trope. But then it becomes like, well, he also, you know, killed my family and I had a, a daughter, you know, and they you get him drunk, which is kind of funny. You know, <laughs> like he's drinking beer right. for the first time. Like, where do you come from? And he just kind of like points the, the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> like what do you mean up north yeah north? Oh, i know people up north <laughs> it's like you don't know people that far north lady yeah um there, so this is a little bit of foreshadowing toward the end of the movie but it's, it's, it's these kind of like interesting little character bits before we go off uh you know following the next uh trail of bodies the uh the alien um I, I don't know what else to say. The alien. There's two of them. What do I call the one guy? The criminal alien. Well, you call him Lloyd and. Uh, mm. Well, Lloyd nope, at least is the same one. guy through the whole movie. He's uh, he's always right. in uh, Kyle McLaughlin. The other guy's jumping around. So first of all, he's in, uh, you know, Chris Mulkey. Mulkey, he's killed. He's the other guy. And I want this car. He steals a Ferrari. And then uh, after his little, you know, he realizes that his body is giving out. Um, is he? He's the one who leads them through the uh, mannequin store, right? That was, oh, no. the, that was the girl. Okay, that's that when was the, Barb yeah. the stripper. Yeah. yeah. Right. So then we entered. Yeah, he goes because at some point it becomes like, uh, you know, if you're because this is what I was trying to read. I'm like, what's this guy trying to do? And he sees this, uh, you know, guy pull up to the side of the curb and there's a girl comes out to meet him and the guy points at the girl and she gets in the car. And then he's like, this is how you attract women. So like, that's his next thing, right? Is like, right. now I want to mate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is that, I don't know. Um, so he goes around, tries to attract women into the car, of course, you know, by pointing at him and they're like, Ooh, and he's all pale faced, you know, cause he's losing <laughs> blood. Right. He is slowly deteriorating. I do like when they, <laughs> when he does try the finger pistol thing and they're like, fuck off. And then he's like, he immediately goes for the gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I laugh pretty hard at that. Like, he doesn't shoot them, so he's just like, "Well, I'll fucking shoot you." Yeah, I, that it's, made it's me a laugh. Funny moment. The, that made me laugh, and then the and then he looked and saw that they had already walked too far, and then he's like, "Oh, fuck it." That made right. me laugh 
<laughs> he's like, no, they're already gone. He's just like, eh, eh, nah, it's too far. Nah, too far. Yeah. Oh, damn and you. Apparently, because the car dealership where he stole the uh, the car from also uh, is like a front for like a gun running operation or something. Uh, he follows like he finds in the guy's wallet, like ends up at this store that's a front. It's like an antique store or something, but it's a front yeah. for uh, like arms dealing in the back room. So, of course, that gives him access to a bazooka, which is going to come in later. Oh, at but the police should, station. You shouldn't be surprised. They also gave free Coke with every car deal. So it was very true, man. You it was got Coke free out Coke of a little with- Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Coke was everywhere. I mean, I think the second biggest industry in LA was running guns at that point. Like this is, I think this is pretty accurate for the eighties. <laughs> it was yeah. a lawless time, man. Yep. Yeah. Cocaine cowboys. Yeah. Uh, um, the good, the good old days. What? So <laughs> the, um, so he ends up going to the strip club where we're introduced to uh, Claudia Christian is uh, uh, the featured performer. Um, of Stray's fame. That's right. She was in a movie that we did. That's a uh, Stray's. You got to go back and listen to that episode. We got, we got two of her on the freak show. Yeah. We just have need we done, one more. Done it by accident? I got to oh, find man. a third one now. I well, think we'll be able to. I, she did. There's some movies on there that would make their home on the freak show. Yeah, well, she was probably uh, most known maybe to this fan base because she was on the show Babylon 5 for many years. And I think it was she on one of the Stargates or the Expanse or the something. Uh, there was a, there was a lot of different Babylon 5 stuff she did. Besides yeah, she's just in all the show. Of them. Yeah. Yeah. Because there were spinoff movies and all that stuff. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. 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 She was like, uh, was she not the head of security, but she was like the number two on the on the ship. Um yeah. But I think like she's one of those actresses who, because of like you know, her roles in The Hidden and in Babylon Five, then becomes like you know an in demand science fiction performer and has done video game voices like you wouldn't believe. I mean, all the World of Warcraft stuff and yeah, so she's all yeah. over the place. So she's a fan favorite, as we found out, you know, through some of the mail that we got. But um, uh. So that's his next thing is that instead of mating with a human woman, he just takes her over. <laughs> right. He's like, right. And he, he's like, I haven't been in this before. I'm going to. And she's dressed in red. She's the new Ferrari. He's going to take her for a test drive. That's right. He likes the red. Yeah. The red. Right. He likes the red and she's in red. <laughs> and we know he likes the red because he that's gives himself a once over. But then the, so, the, the street tough comes up to him as her and says, like, I've got a nice, fast car. You want to see it? So knows exactly the right things to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then it turns out that guy hasn't got a nice car. So she fucks him to death. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a funny God, I scene. love the 80s. <laughs> he was, you he hear was the, making some really, really bad noises. Yeah, and she's yeah. just kind of getting more amused as things go on. And then he starts to squeal and like, ah, 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 and his body comes flopping out of the car. It was a little disturbing. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> fucks him to death and then drives off in her beater. And then, of course, this leads to a chase scene because our uh, hero cops end up <laughs> right on her tail. And this is where the movie starts to feel like, and you guys pointed it out, but I was like, man, the, in a pitch meeting for this movie, somebody went to New Line and was like, yeah, it's an alien body habit movie, but we're going to do it like the Terminator. We're going to do a yeah. Terminator style. You know, yeah, it, it really much. is. From the uh, from the way they treat their characters to the to the goddamn in your face soundtrack, yeah, uh, the score it is very Terminatory, very tech noir. I don't like the score for this movie at no. all. I think it's, it's really bad. It's too much. It's way too much. But then at times it, it's non-existent. There are times where there yeah. is no score, and then there are times where it's just overpowering. Yeah, like, can, I, it wasn't great throughout the movie, and then towards the end when it was amping, when the action was amping up, I was like, this is like. Uh, it's intolerable like it, i can't even handle it right now yeah it's weird it's like it feels like it wants to be something like it's taking its cues from the terminator score that we're going to do like this kind of synthesized thing that's going to sound like a lot of metal and clanging but yep. i mean it really does feel like people are just banging trash can lids together yeah. yeah um i mean it's really bad i thought it was really bad like to the point where this is the third time i've seen this movie and i'm like this movie's kind of decent how come i haven't really you know responded to it before and it might be the music you know what i I mean, it might be like with a different score, this movie might perform even better. But um, right, or or at least just turn down. Like, just let's just start with that. Yeah, that'd be fine. 
Uh, so what does she do with her newfound stripper body? Goes to a mannequin store. She gets driven into a mannequin store. Yeah, the chase uh, scene culminates with Kyle McLaughlin dead shot, blowing out one of her tires when Michael Neary can't do it. Uh, again, this was uh, when you come to like the chemistry of 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 cops and partners and shit like that. Like this is this was one also one of the great moments between the two because they're <laughs> they're, they're they're jiving, they're back and forth. Be like, you should try shooting out one of the tires. It's like you fucking do it. And I like that they're like. In their conversation, they're also dropping curse words, but they feel they don't feel uh, it, doesn't feel sort of it doesn't feel forced, yeah. extraneous. Like it, everything, the dialogue feels like a perfect like balance of back and forth between yeah. those two. And I they love, really showed off the, this part. I love the exchange right outside of the mannequin store when he's like, "You should cover me," and he's like, "No, you don't have to cover me." He's like, "No, I'm going to cover you." And they just went back and forth like he's like, "Are you going to cover me?" He's like cover me like they just went back and forth several times and that cracked me up yeah because he's trying to figure out what the hell are you talking about <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> i'm an alien yeah. what it would, it would be easier if you didn't <laughs> okay well, fine, I mean, won't even, <laughs> even at this point michael nurry doesn't fully not until like the last half hour of the movie does he fully like get into his partners not from here so even yeah. at this point he still thinks his partner's fucking nuts just from the way he's driving and uh, from the, you know, the weird stuff that he's doing. So uh, it, it plays well that one doesn't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. Yeah. Cause this chase through the mannequin store uh, where they, again, uh, I think, you know, Michael Nori is seeing this, right. That uh, yes, this, this person who's completely unrelated to these other crimes is behaving exactly in the same kind of way. And they unload on her and it doesn't take her down. She's bleeding all over the place, but keeps going. I mean, she's very, and this is the thing, I guess that all of them share. Cause I was looking for like, what's the tick that they have. They all lick their lips. Yeah, it's something that they all do, but they have this kind of robotic face, and I'm like, okay, well, you're you, you're trying to be the machine, right? This is this is the Schwarzenegger Terminator who's walking through, you know, police stations with heavy artillery, like blowing shit away. Right. Um, but it culminates on the rooftop. There's like a rooftop exchange where uh, that's where McLaughlin's pulling out his like alien gun or something, and the alien actually talks. I think for the first time really aside from i want that car you know or whatever <laughs> right um where you kind of get the dynamic interplay between them it's like mclaughlin's been hunting this guy for nine earth years and uh, he's like you know you're not going to take me alive and nuri sees all this um but even i thought as a character dynamic this was a thing because mclaughlin actually probably had an opportunity to deal with the alien but doesn't because nuri goes over the edge of the building and is hanging there and it's like oh that's right your partner was killed even though you're an alien you're still going like i'm gonna keep this partner alive so he you know misses the opportunity so he can save his partner's life it's like that keeps right. on going on yeah. Like they've built a character for like a person who's not really even there. If that makes any sense, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But not okay, a human. But there's thing. a mannequin store. <laughs> That's a thing in this movie. Yeah. And it's not just like it's like a three story building with a its own custom neon sign on the roof. Yeah. yeah. Well, they got I, they got to come from somewhere, right? I was literally about to say we need to circle back to the mannequin store because who thought of that? And also. Why did they not utilize the someone pretending to be a mannequin while they're hiding from the other people? This is what I That's thought was going to happen. Yeah, we yeah. didn't really see the inside of it that much. Yeah. It was mostly just rooftop stuff and out right. exterior. It was like one everything. shoot out through the thing, I think. And did you right. see well, in the credits, there were three mannequin assistants. Well, of course, you can't just move a mannequin by yourself. You need at least <laughs> two people and then one person to tell them, yeah, over there. So, three. Bing. Um, yeah, Holly, I think we could have, I was expecting something with the mannequins for her to be like hiding. Yeah. Um, and I think they, and I think they could have, um, at this point, just because mm -hmm. all we do get is them running through and there's a shootout where she's up above and leaves again. Right. So, I mean, there really could have been that moment in this movie. I right. think. Why else would you have it in a mannequin store? Right. Exactly. What is the point of having it set there if you don't utilize it? It right. could be any store. It doesn't fucking matter. Like I right. think it's just a, a a subtextual message about the alien uh, human hybrid. I would believe movie. that if the mannequins like played any part of this, but they don't. Maybe, like, maybe it was like a, a a problem of like uh, brands and and products that this is like. Okay, we don't have to worry about like not show like showcasing the wrong thing and 
showing brands and showing products that we're not allowed to show. Like it was just mannequins. So they're not going to get in any trouble. Yeah. Right. That's the easiest thing to deal with. And yeah. it's creepy. They're all easy to stock. No problem. <laughs> And they're blank humanoid figures. I mean, I don't know. There's probably something there, but I'm not quite grasping oh, yeah. what it is. But, um, yeah. you know, I like to believe that this is this mannequin store is like the origin story for any sort of like movie mannequin. Like Kim <laughs> Control mannequin came from here. The mannequins and maniac came from here. That's what I was going to say. This is I bet around a the corner. There was fucking uh, <laughs> Elijah. Wood. Joe, Joe, Joe Spinell. Was oh, yeah. Around a corner. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that one. Yeah. Because Elijah, Elijah yeah. Wood made his own, I think. Right. But right. the Joe Spinell, he got him from here, obviously. Yeah. I would even this say I think the robots that uh, Brigitte Nielsen posed with in Cobra and that photo shoot probably came from this store too from neptune's <laughs> neptune's mannequin shop right told by the uh, look that up later yeah um it's just a front for drugs now well this is the scene where michael nuri sees it like okay this is you know th- there's something fucking weird going on here this is more like you gotta tell me what's going on because i don't get it but there th- what i liked about what happens next you know when she goes over the edge and splats on the concrete uh we see like a dog come up to her and we're like, is it going to jump into the dog? And then we we cut away, so we don't see. And when they when the detectives get to the ground level, uh, Edo Ross is there, right? And so at this point, for as far as McLaughlin is concerned, the alien has gotten away. It's in somebody, and he doesn't know who. So now it's like, and we don't know who. You know, we're like, well, it was either the dog, it was either Edo Ross, or it was uh, the other guy who's not the captain. He's like the other detective or something seems like he's like the head he's the the head of a department he's like equal with uh clue gulliger okay that's right clue gulliger is also in this movie in this movie yeah sans buck teeth but he is in this movie that's right and he would be in it because he was in nightmare on elm street part two um so with so this basically is where you have no leads so what the movie does is michael newry arrests uh kyle mclaughlin because he's not cooperating with him or not telling him anything, even though this guy is supposedly an FBI agent and locks him up Mm -hmm. in the police station. And this is where we find out that uh, Kyle McLaughlin's character like uh, actually died in a forest fire. And I kind of like this. They didn't say this, right? But I don't know if you got this, but the forest fire in Seattle that killed uh, the actual FBI agent and then his friend, whatever stone went missing. It turns out McLaughlin took stone's body and assumed the FBI agents, um, identity was the crash of the alien ships. Started the forest fire. Do you remember that forest fire a couple of whatever months ago or whatever? That was when yeah. they landed. That's how he got the body. And he's been wandering around ever since then. So it's like, it's just this really subtle thing that they throw out there. Um, right. so, uh this of course and then it the thing actually did go into the dog right so you got that moment where it's like yes. we're gonna have a movie oh we only not wasted only got that moment <laughs> <laughs> wasted i don't know i saw a dog jump through a door and tackle a dude i mean and that that's... was it and then that was it what, what more did you you wanted the dog I mean, actually I'll... driving ferraris around it why why <laughs> right. okay everything i know about this alien so far is that he drives ferraris and he likes 80s metal didn't get any of that with the dog. <laughs> True. I mean, I think that's a whole different genre. There's a whole, probably a whole movie about that somewhere in the 80s. But there could still there. Could've, there. Could've, they could have done something any more interesting than him just jumping on a dude. There, there could have been a million different ways they could have gone with this. That would have been more interesting. Or you're getting into like thing territory or something. I did like the fact that it was like, well, if you're going to do it, may as well jump through a fucking glass door in order to knock the guy out before you take him over. He, of course, is owned by this uh, head of the department that you were talking about. So now he's the one who's possessed by the alien. And now with that level of access, he comes to the police station because, and this is, I guess, where the alien is ultimately headed is, and this has been peppered throughout the movie that there's going to be a visit uh, like this Saturday by this senator who has uh, aspirations to become president. The alien just knows that he wants to be him because he's the one that people applaud, right? That's all he knows. He just wants to be like, I want to keep going up the food chain as much as I can and take the world over. Um, I'm sorry. Is this happening in real life now? (laughs) In this time? Is this what's going on? Holy shit. It might be. Yeah. We need to talk to the FBI quick. (laughs) Summoning all alien bounty hunters. Oh, so no. <laughs> they, uh, it's worse than we thought. 
But so this sets up the most Terminator esque scene in the entire movie, right? I mean, this is like a lift, yeah. almost, right? Where we have a, a indestructible guy armed to the teeth, wandering through a police station, blasting shit away, throwing grenades. They're trying to outdo the Terminator um, because he eventually discovers that um, Kyle McLaughlin's the the space weapon is here. I think, right? And so he wants to get the space weapon. That way he can kill yes. the guy who's been chasing him uh, right. for nine years. Um, and uh, Danny Trejo shows up in this movie. <laughs> he's a prisoner. Yeah. He's a prisoner who gets shot. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. There you go. Nice little, nice little cameo. What it's, One of his, like, doesn't he have like 300 credits or something like on IMDb? One of his 300 credits. Well, is the hidden yeah because of that you're probably wondering well why isn't danny trejo on the saturday night freak show wall of fame if he's been in so many movies but it turns out this movie puts him on the saturday night freak show wall of fame <laughs> wondering according to mf mad the keeper of the wall uh danny trejo was also in and in addition to this while well, he was in con air right which we uh. <laughs> like how you didn't want to say it and he's like you know that era we don't talk about he was in con air i was like maybe if it occurs to you like don't don't let me take it from you but he was also Uh, in uh anaconda anaconda all right right, so there you go the hidden anaconda and con air and i suppose we should also mention that we are also putting uh claudia christian on the wall because she was in strays she was in the hidden but she was also in another sci-fi movie arena you remember when we did arena oh, like right. sci-fi arena. like alien boxing match and, yeah yeah whatever <laughs> i just checked danny trejo has 408 credits wow he's a God busy damn. guy that's because they're all like this movie they're all like hey what's going on that's true yeah before robert rodriguez catapulted him to fame and was it from dusk till dawn was like the first time you really took notice of danny trejo and then uh and then obviously the machete movies and then he has like this whole you know uh, i don't know he was always floating around he was always one of those guys you're like hey it's that guy like he was floating around for a long time being that guy just like i know that guy i've seen him in other movies without ever being like can you imagine how many different tiny residual checks he gets (laughs) <laughs> he, like he gets a direct, lot but they're all really he better small. have direct deposit otherwise that's just a mess <laughs> <laughs> he's wow. doing well for himself i'm sure yes yes um but the alien so then nuri uh does eventually buy into this extraordinary idea and uh then he's put to the test because he actually has to hear the two aliens talking to each other uh, you know it's like what do you think it likes what do you think it's like to be human or how do you like being human well it's better than being an altarian the altarians yeah, are so- filthy people yeah what, what planet <laughs> were they just on <laughs> where they were chasing each other um Alteri- Alteri- it sounds familiar like uh well, did they mention I'm- that in aliens I was like, it sounds like in uh, Guardians, they refer to people from Earth as Itarians. Yeah, and in, it, uh, in the classic uh, movie Forbidden uh, War, no, wait, Forbidden Planet, uh, Altier 5 is like one of the, I don't know, it seems like something like that has always been going on sure. in, in science fiction movies, but I suppose right. if you're going to use it. Yeah, it wasn't in an Aliens they say something about that's, like Altarian Art- Poontang? It's, Ar- it's Arturian. Ar- I'm sorry, Arturian I remember, Poontang. it's Arturian. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're Arturian, baby. Yeah, and I'm sure Star Trek is used. To, yeah. Um, yeah, this is where the rocket launcher gets employed. But there's also something else in the police station that is set up like Chekhov's gun in the first act. <laughs> in a great uh, scene. indeed, the, I love that where they're just like, "Hey, did you see what we found last night?" And they pretty much just shove a flamethrower into the camera. And they're like, yeah. "Look, look at what we found. This won't come into play later." Yeah. I love and that. It's a pretty, like, it's what a do you badass, got there? Right. It's a badass flamethrower. <laughs> like that thing's fucking awesome. It's all it's like a little shotgun. It's all built into the thing. I liked it. Um yeah. and you mentioned earlier the uh the uh bazooka that comes in and he's had the, the guy's had it strapped to his back for most of the time. But then it comes out, what does he say? Just bye. And bye. Yeah. I think he says and then turn, I laughed out loud at that part too, because I'm like, yeah, this so good. Yeah. There's explosions going off in the hallways and they end up, uh, the alien does manage to, uh, escape because again, it body jumps. Um, only again, we don't get to see who it went into, although they explain it like right away. It's like it went into Willis. That's, uh, Michael Nury's partner. So now he's just lost a partner, uh, because he's like, well, he's dead then. Right. And McLaughlin's like, yeah. And where's he going? He's going to the, um, 
the theater where the senator is is having his thing, you know, because this is his uh, goal, right? Yes. Lynn Shay. That's right. Well, we said it was a New Line Cinema movie, but Lynn Shay is also in this movie. Uh, this is back in the Nightmare on Elm Street days, right? So it's young Lynn Shay. Yeah, uh, before she became the mainstay of like every goddamn horror movie of the 2010s. <laughs> yep. God bless her uh, for having yes, a second her. career at like 65. Yep. She's a convention she, regular too. She's like one of the first announcements for every convention. Yeah, I mean that's a great that is a great <laughs> career trajectory from like right? bit player and all those movies like Kingpin. We all remember from Kingpin of the yeah. That, that, yeah. That's the thing I think of every yeah. time. Um, and the teacher in a nightmare on Elm street. I think she was in all the, I think she was like the cameo appearance in like every, uh, new line cinema. And she movie. won Detroit rock city and yep. you know, just everything. Yeah. I mean, Lynn Shea is a treasure. She is overused lately, but she's a treasure. <laughs> yeah. What was the, there was something, was it countdown was the one where we were like, Oh no, it was the grudge. It was like, okay, Lynn Shea. Yeah. 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 You're not blessing these movies anymore by appearing in them. No. They're using but, you. Just but, kidding. But, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, you're better than this. They just want you to make their shit movie better. Yeah. Get that paycheck girl. <laughs> yep. Was she in countdown? No, she was in a Ouija, no. the Ouija movies. Uh, whatever. She's only you would know, Colin. I was going to say, Colin, you're the only one who's seen those. You're the so. only ones who's going to know. Um, so the um, the two cops now, Nori busts McLaughlin out of jail. He's like, okay, here's your alien gun. Let's go. Let's go get him. Let's go take this guy out. Let's take him down. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a hail of bullets, you know, in this uh, the, theater. It, it really is a hail. And for the next, it feels like 20 minutes it's a hail of bullets. Like this is the point where I'm just like, uh, in a movie that, uh, is really like at a clip up till this point, this is the part I felt where it sagged a bit. Cause it is just a lot of gunfighting at this point. Like, I think at this point we need to like get going towards the finish. Yeah. Well, Michael Nury gets shot. And of course not being an alien, that means kind of the end of the road for him. Uh, the alien does eventually jump into the Senator. And so there was a moment where I'm like, M- Kyle McLaughlin is running in there and everybody's unloading on him as he's trying to take the Senator out now. And I'm like, well, what's the optics on this? Right. You know, like, <laughs> right. And what does he go in there with? He goes in there Bad-ass with a flamethrower. Yep. And that's the thing that the alien didn't count on, and he roasts him alive. And then he, as the thing spills out of the charred corpse, he uses the alien gun on him, and boom. In um, front of everybody. Press, police. So, how, and uh, it explodes, yes. And then we get to, what is it, hospital scene next? Yeah. <laughs> and so we don't get the, uh, unfortunately, we don't get what their explanation for all of this was. Like, how this goes down to being okay, where they haven't arrested anybody you know it's it's uh we get into a weird situation where uh we don't know what's going on yeah because i assume that mclaughlin's character would have been under heavy guard in that hospital or something i mean right. he took out a senator u.s senator um but and, he, and then he blew up the evidence of the alien inhabiting him yeah i'm not too sure where he's at at this point although there was that moment when the girl in the audience was like look and pointed out that there was an alien creature coming out of him so maybe that was proof enough i don't know right they're like hmm case closed how's that gonna get covered after this yeah like all right Right. let's go do some coke yeah (laughs) right because it's the 80s um so right. I mean Please they all they all stopped they all stopped and took a break while Kyle McLaughlin pulled out his flamethrower and like <laughs> burned him alive. Everyone's just standing there watching. I'm like, no one's stopping him. It's because right they unloaded. <laughs> they only have like what seven shots or nine shots in those magazines. They're like they're there's out of ammo. 15, there's fifteen in the clip and one in the pipe, and there there's you go. Berettas. Okay. Yeah. The Beretta, and the time it took him to like haul it up and like set it up, they could have tackled him. But no, <laughs> right? They all stopped. <laughs> and while the scene is in slow motion, I feel like the cops were like in real slow motion. They're like, "He's not going to do it, is he?" <laughs> and he did. He a barbecue. Him. He did. Alien barbecue, which is another again fire. That's how you end your movie. Fire explosions is like all classic mm-hmm. stuff. So, what did you think of this? The end of this movie because. Um, I mean, it's set up to be touching and poignant, right? Which is, uh, you know, um, Michael Newry ends up dying. His character dies. I thought the actress playing his wife, like, sold it. You know, it's like she's dealing yeah. with the idea that her husband is about to die. 
um, little she's, girls she's out in the hallway. She's used to this. She's on 90210. Oh, is she? <laughs> she played Donna Martin's mom. Yeah, yeah she is. Okay. <laughs> A lot of extreme <laughs> emotions there. Um, sure. Oh, yeah. Is it teen soap? That's all it is, is extreme emotions, Colin. Nothing yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> well, she ends up... So what basically... Uh, McLaughlin as the body jumping alien. Obviously, he's got a problem now because he's a wanted man. Well, you know, or whatever. He's going to jail, going to prison, or whatever. So he takes this opportunity to jump into Nuri after Nuri dies and assume his identity. And we see, um, you know, the wife uh, coming in. It was actually kind of a little um, like character thing that he did. You notice the wife leans over and kisses him. He reacted like, oh, like this is the first time he's ever been kissed Mm -hmm. Um, and then extends his hand to his daughter. So what I mean, how do you read this? Because that's I guess, is this a happy ending? Is this creepy? Is this like what's his intentions and and what's going on here? Well, I was going to I was going to ask because I didn't I didn't catch the kiss part. Um, So I didn't know if he had given his like life force to Michael Murray and brought him back to life or if he had jumped into the body. Yeah. that's. Do we, kinda, do, we, do we know for sure? I kind of got the life force impression to be honest. Me too. Like yeah, I that's choose to I believe, too. Mm-hmm. I choose to believe Michael Murray is still alive and that he gave his life force. I think yeah. he's surprised to be alive. Um, yeah. And that may be the reason why he gives the eye thing for the kiss thing. But I'm, I'm going to choose to believe that Michael Murray is still alive and that um, Lloyd Kyle McLaughlin gave his life for us because he didn't need it anymore. He was done. He got the guy he was searching for. Um, he can now go join his wife and daughter. I think he gave his life for us and that's it. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally, I, I totally read it as the alien body jumped into Michael Nuri to bring him back. And now that gives him like a daughter again. And he gets to like, so basically it's like, you know, oh, it's too sad. He's going to assume this guy's life you know, basically to give the wife and uh, child a father, you know, even though it's right. going to be him. So it's like, then you have to basically say, well, I'm not me anymore. I am going to pretend to be this guy for them for the rest of my life. You know, I mean, it's yeah, I that's mean, going to be a tough one. I see that. I mean, I see that being one angle, but just the way he woke up and the way he just looked at his wife and said, hey, I was like, it doesn't seem like Kyle McLaughlin. It seems right. like that seems that hay seems like Michael yeah. Murray. It seems like him. Yeah. Um, I'm going, I'm going Michael Murray still alive. Uh, listener, please uh, tell us what you think. Cause I want, I, I really want to know like if this is split or if we're missing it completely. Yeah. All right. There's well. someone out there going, you guys are fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, so we've talked at length about the hidden. We're going to tell you whether or not we would uh, recommend that you watch this movie. But before we do that, we are going to get to the interactive portion of our show. And that's when we read your mail. So we're going to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. <laughs> Thanks to you. I know it was quiet there for a minute, but thank you for <laughs> hearing me. Longer than last time. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus. He's Don't really we, slacking on the job, man. We have the Maybe magic we, of we have too much mail. Um. No, not a whole lot actually. Uh, so you guys gotta you gotta help us out here, but uh, you can write in by uh, following along on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. and you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about the hidden. Peter Gatt writes in and he says trivia for this movie when it was first released in Australia, it was put on a double bill with Evil Dead Two. Okay. You know, I was bad thinking, double bill. What? I don't understand people. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'll get that one. <laughs> well, just that you have a, a two genre movies and kind of horrorish. I don't know, but that's the thing I don't know if like when we talk about double bills now, you know, it's like back in the in the old timey days, there was like one screen at the theater, 
right? So like you weren't going to like, you know, multiple uh, multiplexes, right? There was like a right. theater. And so they would play two movies like back to back and then just play those two movies again, like all day long. It was so you played more than one movie at your right. theater. Yeah. So that's nice, a double nice. bill. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, I love the hidden. It's a buddy action cop film with car chases, loud music, aliens, and Claudia Christian. This movie touches on what it's like to be human with brains, heart, and soul. And did I mention Claudia Christian? You did, sir. Mm-hmm. You did. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, a couple. I got a little fact about Claudia Christian for this movie. When you're done, <clears throat> hit me. Oh well, uh, Claudia Christian. Apparently, her uh, breasts were not up to the task to the costume designers and everyone else. Um, so they made costumes to accentuate what she said was her best area, uh, her ass in this movie. Which is why we have <laughs> the weird outfits that she does wear. So. It's got ass window, this dress. Yeah, it, yeah. weird weird ass window. I but figured that was just stripper is. gear. I was like, I'm sure yeah. they have stuff like that. Uh, but it was, now twice. we know it's intentional stripper gear. Yeah. Well, I know she had, a, she had a choreographer, even though, like, this is the thing, whenever you have, like, uh, you know, an actress who's a part of the major storyline performing a strip tease, it's usually never very convincing, even though they had mm. a choreographer, but... You know, there you go. It was in the credits. She looks very angry during her routine. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's not your star attraction there, but yeah. No. Um, well, yeah, this, yeah, this money thong is very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of weeks ago, we did our best of 2020 episode. Uh, Carl S. writes in, he says, New Year's greetings from Sweden. He says, uh, my uh, podcast hey. player says I listened to almost 100 episodes of the Saturday Night Freak Show during 2020. So thanks for making the year a lot more enjoyable. I also m- want to mention that I did watch the rental and I found it a lot more watchable than Michaela did. It's not great, but I like how it starts and uh, it starts out like a straight mumble core relationship drama and then flips into slasher territory. What do you guys think of the mumble gore genre in general? Ooh, that's a good question. There's too uh, much of it. Very, very few of it is done well, you know? There there probably is too much of it. I haven't seen a lot of it. I've seen a few, um, and I do, I find them interesting. I do like them. Um, they're not something I go back to for, like, you know, entertainment value. Like, they're like, interesting yeah. to watch. I like both of those genres, but I don't know if I like them together. That's kind of how I felt about that movie. It just... Yeah. It, the movie couldn't decide which one it wanted to be. And yeah. That was my problem with it. I find it odd. It's an odd pairing to me. Well, I haven't mm. seen uh, the rental, but as a mumble gore. So is it, is Joe Swanberg in it? AJ Bowen, Amy Smith uh, yeah. yeah. The, that's the like Dupl- uh, Dupl- Mark Duplass. Duplass. Yeah. Dupl- I mean, that's yeah, what, yeah. Yeah. So Ty, yeah. is it directed by Ty West? I mean, that's basically what you're talking. Pat Healy. Is he in it? Yeah, that's what you're talking about. Right. The, the mumble gore movies. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like them. Uh, I think we're missing the big thing here is that we're big in Sweden, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. All right. Yay. Thank you very much, yeah. Carl. The Freak Show family. I want a big Yay. in Sweden t-shirt. Like Saturday Night Freak Show, big in Sweden. <laughs> we can have fake tour dates on the back. <laughs> All right, Michaela. That's there you funny. go. Boom. I big like in that. Sweden. Uh, <laughs> Travis Legler writes in about that episode. Is Sean breaking up with Tremors? He asks. <laughs> Okay, no 2020. Now 2020 has officially pissed me off. This can't be happening. I feel like the d- drunk waitress in maximum overdrive yelling at the trucks. You can do this? <laughs> that was the final straw for We you. made you. We made you. We Doesn't made she you. also yell that? Yeah. She does. Yeah. So, I mean, tremors may have made me, but oof. Uh, yes. Again, if you haven't listened, uh, there's there's quite a, uh, a relationship stop point in our <laughs> best and worst of episode that you should go listen to wow uh michael whitaker i think it was that episode he said the song drinkenstein from rhinestone is a long-running joke on my favorite radio show and i always get a chuckle when i hear it nice (laughs) it never stops being funny yeah it's sung by (laughs) sylvester stallone for those of you who don't know this it's sylvester stallone and dolly parton rhinestone um about our episode the curse of frankenstein simon carter writes in and says hey guys i'm just catching up on a couple episodes and i heard my comment read out about bray studios colin is right oakley court is still standing and it's a hotel now pre-covid they have an annual rocky horror viewing party where the audience essentially takes over the whole place i discovered this one passing one day and witnessed a bunch of half-naked shit-faced adults partying on the grounds there you go there you go go. even though bray studios has been torn down 
And uh, Pat Hetfield has been uh, listening to like all of our episodes on uh, YouTube. And Pat, thank you very much for for listening. And again, we are reading all your your uh, comments about our past episodes. So again, thank you. thank you everybody for writing in. We really appreciate it. Now we're going to go you, around the room and we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. And it's called The Hidden, starting with Sean. Okay, here we go. <laughs> the Hidden. Uh, I'm just going to say it. Uh, the Blu-ray is in my shopping cart. Um, I had a really fun time with this movie tonight. Um, man, it's been a while since I've watched like a good buddy cop action movie from the 80s. And holy shit, this hit the spot. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's fun. Uh, everything we said about the movie. I think the, uh, I think the actors are doing really good. I think Michael Nury is killing it in this movie. Like as the character that we have to, uh, go through all of this for. And as far as like being informed that your partner's an alien, all that stuff. Like, I think he knocks it out of the park as far as believability goes. Mm -hmm. Um, if this situation were to happen, like he's reacting to it, how you, what seems like a normal reaction to it. Um, Script, I think the script is good. Uh, I, you know, it's there's explosions, there's strippers, there's there's drugs, uh, you know, cocaine out of little Corvettes and shit. Um, this is '80s in excess, and it's a pretty fantastic time. Um, I'm gonna recommend the hell out of it. Like I said, the Blu-rays in the, in the thing, it's coming. Um, you should definitely watch this movie. It's so fun. Um, again, this and Dead Heat, great double bill. Um, I, I could, I can watch that all day. But yeah, I had a great time with this. I really, I can't wait to watch it again. Uh, Michaela, what did you think of the hidden? I agree with a uh, a lot of what you said, Sean. I think we kind of hit on like the flaws with it. Like obviously, the score is not good. Yes. Um, and that does stand out because it gets so loud and overpowering. Whereas like if they would just turn it down a little bit, you wouldn't notice how bad it was. Right. Um, however, like that's really nitpicking, I think. And I, I, you know, if you, I think if you listen to this episode, there really isn't much else we pointed out as far as having a problem with it. Um, I, I really didn't know what to expect of this movie. I'd never heard of it. Didn't know what it was about. Went in completely blind. I avoided looking up anything about it. And it was a lot of fun. I had a good time with it. It was not at all what I expected. Uh, I think the title is like so generic that you could kind of like think of whatever it, and be completely wrong about this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's just a lot to love about it. I don't really know what else to say because I feel like we kind of already hit on all the good stuff about it, but definitely check it out. Hard recommend. Holly, what'd you think? Uh, yeah, no, I, I think, I think we're on the same page. Um, the only thing I really knew about this, I looked at the poster and I saw it was Calum Glocken and uh, Nori and um, all I saw was detectives. So going by the poster and detectives, I was like, fuck, is this going to be like a procedural? Like, are we going to watch like a detective movie and it's going to be boring? I was not expecting this at all. This was a very pleasant surprise. I... Like, seriously, think about it, going in with that mindset and then a fucking alien coming out of the dude's mouth. Like, this was a shock to me. I was like, oh, my God, we are not watching what I thought we were watching. So mm. it was a very pleasant surprise. Um, like we were saying, you know, the only things that really we had to like complain about if we're going to complain about something was like it, it did. There was a moment when it started to drag a little bit towards like the, the end of the second act, kind of uh, beginning of third. Um, and then. Um, what you were saying about the score, it's its a horrendous score. It's very distracting. It does pull away from the movie. I will say that for sure. But not a, it doesn't pull away enough to make me not like the movie. I still loved it. I thought it was so much fun. Um, it's one of those movies that I feel like it was fun to write. Like, I don't, I, I feel like they just kind of went for it in, in like the comedy and the, the situational um, moments of this movie. Like, it was funny, but it was also like, it, it hit all the beats that I needed it to. It, it was the, the car crashes, the aliens, funny. Like, it was just, it gave me everything I wanted. Like, you know, Sean, I agree with you. Like, as far as, like, an 80s buddy cop movie, this hit the spot. And then it gave us more, which was just fantastic. So, yeah, I agree with you guys. I'm going to recommend the hell out of it. It was a good time. I can't believe I'd never heard of it. I feel right? Like, I feel like this should have a major cult following. If, if it does, I'm sorry. I am not aware of it. But, yeah. You should definitely check out The Hidden. Colin, bring us home. Yeah, I was actually surprised uh, last week when you said that you guys uh, weren't even aware of it. Um, no. I mean, I guess the fact that the viewers, or the, the viewers, the listeners chose it means that there is 
like uh, the so readers, Colin, the, the, the Brailers, the Brailers, the yeah. Brailers shows it. Yeah. Uh, so that means that there is like a following because I was kind of worried. I'm like, fuck, these guys don't know about it. You know, it's like, is this movie slipping through the cracks? Uh, because I've always, you know, hurt. You know, it's like it seems like it's always existing out there as the example of the body swapping alien movie. Like this is this is the one that everybody like the hidden, you know, like because uh, you, now you're going to go back and look at reviews for Jason Goes to Hell and it's going to be like it's a very <laughs> hidden like, you know, right. Um, yeah, it's uh I mean, it's a lot of fun, right? Uh, the dialogue is witty. Like Sean was pointing out, I think the characterizations are spot on where the, it feels lived in. They feel like real people. This is something that, you know, like I'm not getting out of uh, some modern films, but the 80s seem to capture this. Um, it has that really 80s kind of amped up fun aesthetic, you know, like not aesthetic, but um, just feel to it. You know, I mean, it has you, all your bases covered. It's got your action. It's got your humor. It's got your science fiction. Uh, it's got your cop movie, your cop buddy movie, you know, all rolled into one. And that's why I'm sitting there like tonight I was watching it. And seriously, like, you know, when we were told that we were going to be watching this, I was like, oh, the hidden, you know, how many times have I watched this movie in my life? This is at least like the third time. And the, the prior times before it, it's always because it comes up somewhere and somebody says like, you should watch the hidden. And I'm like, like did, and I didn't get that much out of it and watching it tonight. I'm like, this is actually like a really good movie. And I think it is the score is the f- problem with it. The reason I don't connect with it is because the music sucks so much. And it's not doing what the drama of the scene requires, you know, at any given time with a better score. I think this would have been like a, a bigger classic. Obviously it's a cult classic right now. Uh, and I think it's, uh, you know, entirely deserving of that. There's, there's, I think what I really keyed in on was the, it is like the little human touches, you know, with the guys in the department or with McLaughlin's alien character and his interplay with like, uh, you know, Nuri and all this. And I mean, there's maybe like, what does it mean to be human? Would the alien have been, you know, a uh, fast car, heavy metal, you know, cocaine, you know, stripper pursuing thing if he would have landed somewhere else in the united states or in a different country in the world you know is it because he's in los angeles he's doing what the los angelinos do you know i don't know but uh yeah it's basically what it's a you know if an alien came to earth and took a joy ride in a human being and tried to experience the maximum like capacity of uh of the human animal <laughs> you know uh so that's kind of funny or it's, it's amusing, you know, it's amusing to watch. It's a good idea for a movie, even though it, you know, feels a lot. Uh, it, the only, it has that, there's a Terminator, um, you know, feel over, especially toward the end of the movie. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend The Hidden. You got to check this movie out. If you haven't seen it or heard of it, uh, you're missing out. Um, but yeah, The Hidden. So that's a Man. that's all for that's freak show approved right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you everybody. And we are being. Yeah. I think they all knew what kind of year we had. They're like, we're going to be nice to them <laughs> and give them some nice movies for those nice people to watch. Sean, so uh, I think grand- you're speaking too soon. We've only gotten like, through two of the four don't movies. Don't say that soon, Colin. Colin, what are we watching next week? Oh no! And then we'll and then we, we'll decide. <laughs> we are we are going down. It is downhill. <laughs> that's right. Because we were saying last last year we started with the least. Uh, vote getter and worked our way up to the top now this year we're going the other way it was big yeah. trouble little china then the hidden and then next week's movie you ready yeah the adventures of buckaroo bonsai across the eighth dimension was the third most popular movie uh okay. you guys voted I, for so i feel like it was bound to, get, to come at some point there you go i've never seen this never seen it i've never seen it either well, all right. So there's another one that's going to be new to the Freak Show family uh, next week. Uh, we hope you'll join us then for the adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai across the eighth dimension. I feel it's important to say that whole title. The whole time. thing. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> all right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark.